Welcome to another moment of truth. And we bless God for your life, for being part of this moment. And I believe that God is empowering you to live in Babylon. Daniel lived in Babylon. What was, what were his, uh, what can we learn from his life? Number two, we said the last time it was intentional. Number two here is that Daniel and his team, they know who they are. Identity. They know who they are. You need to know who you are in order to be able to live in Babylon. Failure to know who you are is a number one recipe to fail in Babylon. When you look at uh, Esther chapter 3 verse number 4, the Bible says that Mr. Mordecai, Mordecai refused to bow to Haman. The same thing here, Daniel and his team, they know who they are. They know their identity. They asked them to bow to idol. They said, no, we don't bow to anything except God. My, my, my brother, my sister, you are a Jew. You don't bow to anybody. You bow to God. You pay obedience to God. Am I saying you should not respect your father and mother? No, that's not what we are talking about. But when you come and bow to people as if you are worship, they ask them to come and bow to idol. They refuse. They say, no, we are not going to bow. Even if you kill us, we are not going to bow. Even if our God will not save us, we are not going to bow. They knew their identity. Mordecai told them, I'm a Jew. I don't bow to nobody except God. So these people know who they were. If you have been born again, you are a spiritual Jew. Romans 2.29. Romans 2.29. The Bible says, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, inwardly. And circumcision is that of the earth in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. In fact, I have another news for you. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Verse 9. The Bible says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praise of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Beloved brethren, you are a spiritual Jew. One, you are a king and a priest. You are a king and a priest. A king, don't bow. a king does not bow to anybody. The priest is the authority in spiritual. You don't bow to no idol. Stop bowing to the idols of Babylon. You need to recognize that you are a king. You are a spiritual Jew. Know your identity. The moment you know your identity, no matter what they offer you in exchange for it, you will say no. They didn't have anything, but they said, ah, we are Jews. We don't bow to anything. No. He said, hear ye, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, not anybody. That's what you will do to survive in Babylon. You must learn the secret of not bowing down to the antics of, of Babylon. Anything you call the Babylonian or Babylonian practice. When you look at um, 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 Philippians chapter 3 verse 20. Philippians 3 20. The scripture says, for our citizenship is in heaven. From which, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ. Excuse me sir, you are just an ambassador here. Don't go and be joining yourself to them. No. The Bible says the prodigal son traveled to a far country and joined himself to a strange country and to strange people. What do you think will happen? He started eating with swine. The moment you lose your identity of who you are, that you are a born again child of God, that you are a child of Zion, 
that you are a child of God, that you are a king and priest unto God. You don't bow to nobody. If you lose that identity, if you forget, forget that identity, excuse me, sir, you won't be able to live in Babylon. Because you lose your identity, they'll give you an alternative. Remember, they gave them a different name. Remember, don't forget. They wanted them to lose their identity. But they said, no, we know who we are. We are children of God. So, don't, you see, no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. The moment you maintain your identity and every tongue that is lifted up against you will condemn it. It is my prayer that somebody will go out of this place and be determined never to lose his identity. Remember who you are. Let me give you a second one, please, before we go. Hopefully God will help us that we'll still be able to play around with time today in Jesus' name. Now, very quickly, Daniel and the team were will have a resolute mindset. You see, they, their mind was made up. You need to make up your mind to serve the Lord your God. Joshua, Joshua will say to them, Choose you this day. Joshua 24 verse 15. He said, Choose you this day whom you will serve. Let me even read that scripture. Joshua 24 verse 15. He said, And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But I love the last phrase. But as for me and my house, we will serve God. Your father served the God of the Amorites, uh, the God of the Egyptian. On the other side, you, you are serving God of the Amorites here. He said, look, as for me, I'm not going to serve the God of the Babylonian. No, sir. Be resolute. If you are not, the devil will give you alternative. That's how to live in Babylon. In the midst of all the attractions, determine that, no, I'm not going to allow all of this to woo me to himself. Moses told them the same thing. He said, see, I have said before you this day, life and death. Choose you this day who you will serve. Be resolute never to, to, to jump between two opinions. He said, how long shall you hop between two opinions? First Kings chapter number 18. That was uh, Elijah talking to people of Israel. He said, choose you this day who you will serve, my friend. Don't stop jumping up and down. If you jump up and down and begin to look at the camp of the Islamic faith, you begin to look at the camp of the Buddhists, you begin to, you don't know what you believe. The devil will sway you one of these days. You need to wake up, my friend, and be resolute about the faith of your father. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. In John chapter 6, verse number 18, John chapter 6, verse 68, let me quickly read that to us. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the word of eternal life. Brethren, some disciples left Jesus Christ and the followers, they left him. So he turned to the disciples because he taught them very hard word. He said, you two, you go away. <laughs> Peter said, we, can, we don't know where to go. We don't, have, uh, we don't have plan B. You are our plan A, plan B, plan C, plan, plan everything. In fact, there is no alternative. That was what the Bible says of them. And they stood their ground until they said to Jesus, where do we go? We are going nowhere. We will stay with you. Be resolute in your service to God. I want to read one last scripture before I let you go. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10 to 13. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10 to 13. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the evil one. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil days. And I love this one. Having done all, what do you do? You stand. Tell the devil, 
I don't care whatever Babylon has to offer me. I'm going to stand and the name of the Lord will be glorified. That is how to live in Babylon. Be resolute about your faith. Be determined to stand on the side of God. Whether he saves you or he kills you or allow people to kill you, be resolute. Stand and don't give up. The Lord bless you as you go. Have a wonderful week in Jesus' name. Amen.